Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Australian Market Preview for Friday, 4th December. My name is Carl Kapalingwa. I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets, and it is a pleasure to be with you to wrap up a, another exciting week on the markets. Before we do, we'll talk about the Think Markets difference, which is substantial $8 flat rate trades, your own holder identification number, and unlimited phone support. Three fantastic reasons why you should choose Think Markets before your next ASX share trade. Okay, the agenda for today is to have a look at some of the key market moves from around the world for the next 24 hours. At the end, we'll have a look to the next 24 and check out some of the key macroeconomic data that's going to come out. In between those things, we'll have a look at a bunch of charts, some broken moves, some dividends, and more. Okay, have a look at the trading from yesterday on the local market. Not a bad performance, up 0.4 of a percent. I know the energy sector did pretty well, up 1.5%, as did the material sector, up 3.8%. That was on the back of uh, you know some really strong performances in base metals, in iron ore. Uh, we saw BHP, Rio, Fortescue do really well. Fortescue was up uh, uh, over 10%, uh, as well, you know, and a number of those other uh, resources stocks did very, very well indeed. Uh, the rest of the market was pretty quiet. It's uh, a lot of that value, cyclical trades was, was coming off. And I note um, technology didn't do all that well either. So if you weren't in materials or energy, uh, you probably saw some falls. Looking around the world, a pretty quiet session in Asia, Nikkei up slightly, Shanghai down slightly. In the US, it was a pretty similar picture. We saw the Dow Jones up 0.3 of a percent, S&P 500 roughly flat, and the NASDAQ up 0.23 of a percent. As we'll see in a second, when we look at the share price index futures for the ASX 200, they trade overnight. We'll see a sharp fall towards the end of that chart, as was reflected in the US markets, which fell late in the session on the back of Pfizer coming out and saying they would love to produce more doses of their vaccine, but simply can't because of you know the quality and quantity of supplies at the moment, mainly impacting uh, their, their expected production into the end of the year, not expected it to uh, impact FY21 production at this stage, but creates uncertainty in terms of the, uh, the logistics of this vaccine rollout, and markets don't like uncertainty. I think, and I've said it, in the media a number of times, there are plenty of things that can go wrong with this uh, this rollout. And as, as those things inevitably hit the market, markets uh, were going to chuck easy fits. Look, still managed gains. And I think that's constructive. Uh, Europe was, let's call it down slightly, UK up slightly. Uh, aluminium down, but it has had a stellar run of late. Copper backing off slightly there on the LME, lead down 1%. Otherwise, it, was, um, it wasn't too bad. Tin up, zinc up. Uh, copper down a little in the US. Iron ore doing pretty well in the local um, trading session on the China Dalian Exchange, up about 1.74%, uh, and it was up 1.5% in the US dollar price overnight. Spot gold up half a percent, but silver down 0.3 of a percent. Energy prices doing very, very well at the moment, up another 2% on crude oil, 1% on Brent. The Aussie dollar reflecting some of the strength in those uh, commodity prices, up 0.3 of a percent but we have seen some broader weakness in the US dollar. That's down a half a percent as the euro continues to surge. Good to see 10-year rates in the US come down a touch. They were down about 2.6 basis points there, but still uncomfortably high in the 90s at the moment, the nervous 90s. We don't want to see it uh, break into the 1% and higher zone. Thought I'd kick off today's charts with Bitcoin. It looks poised here to, to break through into the 20,000s. We could see a two-handle today, certainly over the weekend. Bitcoin trades over the weekend and it loves to move over the weekend when volumes get thin. It can do absolutely anything. So definitely keep an eye on this one today. Um, I, I was on Ausbiz and I was saying, hey, look, this big fall here is problematic unless we see a really quick and sharp snap back up. And that's what we've seen. So that's really positive for Bitcoin going forward. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the cleanest chart up here, but that's Bitcoin. Um, it does look like it can get through uh, over this weekend, I would suggest. So if you're not uh, long, you might want to consider, look, don't go, don't throw the house at this one. Um, consider some small positions to take advantage of a move through 20, and then you can see how it goes from there. Um, if you've still got that you know, 25% I talked about, I mean, we talked about getting in here, uh, selling 75% there, keeping 25% of upside. Um, definitely hang on to that. Maybe you want to add a small um, position to that too. 
Okay, having a look at equities markets, good old-fashioned traditional shares, not looking as good as Bitcoin, unfortunately, but still looking pretty good. Short-term uptrend, definitely intact, as is, as is the long-term uptrend. Look, that the very, very short-term price action on the, on the candle-by-candle candle basis is showing some supply up around these levels. They're very, very small candles, so that tells me there's a very, very small amount of supply at these levels. Demand overall still building, as we can see uh, from, from the moving averages and the price action in the chart with high peaks, high troughs. So happy to maintain an overall long bias, but a little bit cautious in the short term. I think that's reflected in the way markets have been trading over the last few days. NASDAQ, pretty similar picture there. That late um, sell-off, as we'll see in a, in a, in a chart uh, coming up, wasn't uh, wasn't fantastic for the price action, but overall happy to maintain the long bias. There's the uh, sell-off I was talking about. Time to get the the pen out. So uh, things were going really well. And to be fair, if, if if US markets closed up around these levels, you know, commensurately, we the price action would have looked really really good. And that's that Pfizer news there. It it, it stunned markets a little bit. That look, I, I think they'll assess it after the close. They'll have time to you know sit down with a cup of tea, read through it, and understand it's it's not all that bad and you know i think we'll, we'll pick up uh, where we left left off yesterday but the spy uh, which had a high of 6643 so we we want to see for a positive day in the market we want to see a close as high as possible it hasn't happened um, we've got a 66 up oh, this is the other way around that's the high and that's the close no big deal uh, 6611 close which is a bit of a discount to the 6615 on the cash and indicating about a 0.2% fall on the open today uh, overall, though, I would expect any falls to be bought into because I think we are heading in this direction. I think we have confirmed this now as a trough as part of a rising peaks and trough pattern. It's all looking pretty constructive, actually, for a continued move higher. Don't forget uh, 68.97. There's a little bit of a pressure point there, but uh, then nothing until we get up to the all-time highs. Pretty happy to maintain a long buy, so I'd have to zoom in to see whether we've crossed up there um, but we're getting very close to having a long-term uptrend, and we haven't been able to say that uh, since pandemic times, since March this year. So it would be good overall to see that trend turn up. It'll give, I think, in longer-term investors confidence to put some money into the market. No major dividends today, but we do have a couple coming up on Monday. You can press pause and see if your stock's on that slide. Heading over to the broker moves, a couple out this morning, interesting ones to Afterpay. Uh, Goldman Sachs raising their price target from 94.40 to 99.90. They reviewed the November sales. Now, this year around just the timing of the weekend, we had Black Friday and Cyber Monday in November. So November sales are going to be boosted by that. Quite often, they'll fall. Uh, one will fall in November, then one will fall in December. Uh, Goldman Sachs increasing their FY. Uh, 21 estimate sales estimates, I should say, by 6.8%. They are monitoring, though, increased competition, especially in the US. Cecil was mentioned in their um, broker report as being one of those key competitors. Looking further afield, we have Champion Iron. It got two price target upgrades, same price target uh, starting point and ending point there from Raymond at James Financial and Scotia Bank. These are a Canadian focused investment banks and those prices are in Canadian dollars. Jeffrey's increasing Macquarie Group's price target from 143.50 to 149.50. That's a nice bump. They made a, a US takeover uh, that was announced yesterday and just I'm guessing a reaction to that. Morgan Stanley, Qantas, is, uh, you know, they've been saying that things are looking pretty good into Christmas for them. And Morgan Stanley reacting positively. That's a pretty nice bump up in the share price there. Share price target, I should say, to $6.20. JP Morgan has downgraded Treasury Wine Estates, no doubt, on the back of that quote-unquote tariff that China has temporarily, I should say, applied to Australian wine imports, uh, neutral to underweight for Treasury Wine Estates. Uh, we'll have more broker moves coming out during the day, so make sure you hit that market news section of the website and tune in. Have a look at some of the economic data that was released overnight, the non-manufacturing or services PMI coming out for the USA. We saw a reading of 55.9. That is in line with expectations, but down slightly on the previous month's reading. These are November compared to October. And we can see uh, after this V-shaped recovery, we're seeing a bit of a tailing off 
in uh, economic activity in the US. So these are services and services are anything from, from a haircut uh, to a cab ride, I guess. So it's harder to do that when you're having, you know, 150 plus thousand cases confirmed of COVID a day. So we're seeing that impact there. But on a positive note, we did see the weekly jobless claims come down to 712,000, still crazy high compared to pre-pandemic, but better than expected. We were expecting 775,000. Last month we had 777, which actually got upgraded. Is that the right way to say it? Revised higher to 787. It's not an upgrade. It's a bad thing if that's revised high. Um, So in the end, this last week's uh, claims were actually pretty good within the context of uh, the last few weeks, which were trending higher. So it's good to see one tiny little blip down there. I'll give you some interesting stats. stats. Now, these are initial claims for unemployment benefits. It's your first first time you've claimed it. There are people who have been claiming for a period of time. It was good to see that number drop. So we're at 5.52 million on continuing claims. That number was down 569,000. So we saw a drop of what, you know, do the maths there, 75,000 for initial claims, but continuing claims dropped 569,000 at 5.52 million, still well higher than what we'd normally expect for the US economy, but but nice to see a big drop there and first time below 6 million since the start of the crisis. Uh, There are still some 20 million Americans claiming some form of unemployment benefits. Heading into the economic data for the rest of the week, we have Australian retail sales out today and this evening we'll see the big one. US non-farm payrolls widely considered to be the most important data release on a monthly basis. I'll give you some insight here. We are expecting payroll growth of 440,000 jobs and a decrease in the unemployment rate to 6.7%. So watch out for that uh, 12.30 a.m. Sydney time. That's it for me this morning. We'll have more updates during the day. You can catch them in the market news section of our website. Follow me or the Think Markets handle, if you like, on Twitter. Otherwise, you can register for our Think Learning webinar coming up on Wednesday. That is how to value a stock. And before that, we'll have the weekly Think Tank, which will wrap this week and look ahead to next week. The disclaimer before I leave you says that everything we've talked about this morning is general advice, so you know consider it carefully. Don't forget, we are an Australian regulated broker. We do have some products that could see you lose more than you deposit. So before you do anything, make sure you read this disclaimer carefully. Give us a call or consult the website for further details. Okay, that's it for me for now. All the best for your trading until we catch up again. Bye-bye. <laughs>